2018 will mark the 10th year that my brother, Said Malikpur, has been in prison in Iran. Our family's lives have been turned upside down and destroyed by the Iranian government. Our nightmare began on October 1st, 2008, the day my brother was abducted. For a long time, in our case, there have been odd messages that have signalled that, that Nazanin was being used as a bargaining chip. Um, it's felt a bit, a bit, um, how would I put it, unclear what the bargain was and, and a bit um, opportunistic, if I'm honest, yeah. and it's changed in different ways. Um, but certainly, it felt that, you know, I mean, Nazneen wasn't doing anything, so she was targeted for who she was, and, and who she was, was was someone who was British-Iranian, um, has a British passport, had a, a charity career in, in the media, um, and could be profiled. Um, thereafter, um, she's been held in, in all sorts of different ways. Um, and that's part of the sort of the strange dynamics that there are in many of these cases, um, in that obviously, She's being held for uh, essentially what is a fight between the UK government and the, and the Iranian government, um, and we're caught up in it. Um, and it makes for a, a tough relationship all round. Um, I think it means it's quite hard to live through um, for the prisoner, so for Nazneen, knowing that, OK, she might be serving a long sentence, but it might be over tomorrow, depending on if other people off stage come to an understanding or not. Um, very hard to, to, to feel like any part of your life is not living in a waiting room. Uh, he went to Iran for workshop um, two years, about two years ago. And the uh, first week uh, he was in Iran, after uh, uh, one week um, he arrested him uh, by security intelligence in Iran. Um, because uh, they put him a lot of uh, pressure without um, uh, see his family for three months. After three months, also uh, they put him in isolation, and also they said, uh, tell to him uh, they will um, treat uh, his. Um, uh, they that they treated him by his family uh, in Sweden, and uh, also uh, said about um, the, we arrested your family in Sweden. Our researchers have spoken to former Iranian-Canadian prisoners who have catalogued some atrocities that have been happening. And they've also confirmed to us that political prisoners are definitely been used as bargaining chips. Now, we know there's close to 30 dual nationals currently behind bars. Why do you think this is happening? Well, dual nationals, um, uh, in terms of the, their legal situation, are vulnerable. Um, that is exactly because there are dual nationals. In an ideal situation, it would not happen, but it's absolutely true that with Iran's deteriorating relationship with the West, um, these dual nationals become uh, a very particular target. Now, again, um, analytically, we have to understand how um, this happens. It is not because of some innate um, you know, evil nature of um, the Iranian state. We shouldn't forget any state wants to increase its legitimacy, and any state wants to keep in power. Now, one reason why the situation is so bad right now is because of the deterioration of Iranian-US relations. Um, there is a real threat, and this, this threat is real in terms of um, uh, you know, a military threat. Um, there's a real threat to, to Iran right now, and expressed um, several times um, by you know, Israeli leaders, um, the Trump administration, and many others.